Hey guys, it is Christopher Sarda from Chaos and Comics. Just gonna do another comic haul here. I wanna do a lightning review thing and I may do it after this, we'll see. Depends on the kid, he decides what I do. Um, so this comic haul's straightforward, pretty much. Um, let's see, I wanna start with the old. So, uh, oh, why don't we real, really quick. So, I'm not gonna show all these, but um, when I bought the Dark Horse Presents that uh, had um, the first Aliens, or so it had Aliens and Predator, it was leading to the first Aliens versus Predator. Alien and Predator had already premiered in comics by that time in Dark Horse Presents. Um, I realized I like the other stories in the anthology. So um, I was able to find a, a nice little um, stack of them, maybe about 25 or 30 from Searchlight Comics, I think. These all came out to um, well under a dollar each. And uh, basically, a lot of these have standalone stories in them from, from Dark Horse Presents. Um, a lot of them continue, so I have the little run in there. So uh, I'll uh, read and collect these a little bit, although I'm doing that a lot, where I'm buying a big, thick thing of things like Ghost Rider and whatnot and, and not getting around to it. But um, I thought these are pretty cool, and I'm trying to open... You know, these were made a little bit more to uh, be beginning and end stories in a lot of cases, or or very short comics, like smaller than one shots, or if they go over a few issues, the equal to a one shot. So I'm trying to read that a little more, um, just to see if I find any um, sneaky good writers and artists that maybe didn't stick around, which is real cool, and then go find some of their stuff from that time period. Uh, that's my trick, by the way, to find good music on vinyl that's cheap. I will buy, um, on Discogs, I'll buy like, uh, um, old various artists, old like uh, record label comps. And uh, a lot of times there's bands on there that never got famous or didn't do anything, but they have, you know, they've printed uh, vinyl or CDs and, and normally you can find them for pretty cheap um, when you end up liking something on a comp. Uh, I find that, that what's good isn't always democratic. And um, as some people might say for things like House of X and stuff like that, you know, there's a little bit of a hive mind sometimes. So good stuff can sneak by, and I, that's what I hope to find in Dark Horse Presents. Anyway, aside from that, this is what I uh, bought today and some Alterna comics. Uh, X-Force number six. Uh, I forgot. I guess X-Men wasn't on the shelf. I normally just grab these off the shelf because I know they'll be there. The Dawn of X stuff, so none of them are in my box or anything. I suppose if I really like to cover or something, I'd go get that. Um, but... Uh, I don't think I saw X-Men on the shelf. They must have sold out by the time I got there. So I'll have to go get X-Men tomorrow, probably at lunch at a different comic store. It gives me an excuse to go to another comic store. Jeez, this is so professional. Um, Detective Comics 554. It's the first appearance of Black Canary. Uh, it's the real first appearance, not a reprint at all, dude. Uh, I also grabbed this. I, never, I haven't read these Star Wars adventures. There's so many Star Wars comics and I'm a little bit more tied to, to what's canon and stuff. So these kids, these more kid-oriented stories, I haven't really paid attention to. Although some of them looked cool, like Vader, Vader's Castle or whatever it was. But I never did get into it. So I ordered three after I read one. I tried to order two. Two didn't show up anywhere. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find two so that I have three also. Uh, but I may have to just buy it. I hate buying a $4 comic digital. But I may have to just buy it so I can read up on this. And then, um, I haven't watched Discovery yet. Star Trek Discovery Season 2. I've watched Season 1. And I haven't watched the shorts after Season 2. So I'm going to wait, let a few issues of Picard build up. Um, and then I'll be able to buy that, uh, the CBS streaming app for a month. Um, and, uh, and see if I can uh, binge all of those. I'm not a big binge guy, but I think a month I can watch all of Discovery and a big chunk of Picard. We'll see how I feel about it after that. Um, my Alterna shipment came in. So here's it came on a Wednesday, a bunch of short stories. Um, I've never actually read one of these, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's sort of the same thing as uh, Dark Horse Presents, isn't it? Um, in case you missed it, this is uh, their way of reprinting. So right now they are reprinting um, Eric Henson's Eden, which I have the originals to. So now I'll have the reprints of it. Uh, Psycho Co or Psycho KO. Um, people that like Alterna have told me this was good. Um, I have the first series and this series. I haven't read it yet. 
This is one I have been reading. Um, there's a couple other ones I would read before these new ones come in. This is my last Alterna shipment. I decided not to renew for 2020 just because every, I didn't want every book, right? They, they do a good job of, uh, running the gamut as far as like genres and age groups and stuff. And, uh, I've done this before where I've subscribed to like beyond is beyond is beyond. If they're called something like that, um, like a psychedelic rock, uh, vinyl club, you know, but just after through a whole year six seven vinyls or all the comics you know what i mean there's going to be stuff you don't like and i'd rather pick and choose rather than the four dollars i save per vinyl or the no i don't save any money on alterna i was just trying to be supportive so last god man we are at number four i read number one i flipped through number two i realized ooh, i didn't remember stuff but this felt like a some kind of, you know, epic detailed story I really wanted to, to dive into, have a, a big group of issues. So that's what I'm probably going to do. I will um, probably start from one again and read one, two, three, and four, and then review it as a, a four piece, I guess. We'll see. Um, Deadpool, the end. I would have never bought these, but here I am buying them. But the Venom one was so good. And, uh, you know, at work, flipping through Twitter, someone, uh, I forget who it was, someone I just started following today, I um, was talking about how great Deadpool the end is, so here I am. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to read Deadpool the end, too. Something I never read and never even thought of, and uh, people are telling me is uh, very good, is... Let's see. There's an earthquake. Uh, fault lines in Vegas. Um, is Claremont's X-Men the end from, like, 2005 or 2006. So I'll, uh, I'll have to, like, look into that, see how I can get it, because I don't want to buy it digitally. Um, it was regular price, so fuck that. But, um, and that's not one of those kind of um, old graphic novels you'd expect the library to have necessarily. It's not like this wild classic thing, but I mean, apparently people in the know know, so. Um, Hockey number one, I enjoyed this uh, surprisingly. I've only read, I think I said this last time, I've only read the, um, I've only read the first volume, so like the first six issues or whatever it is. Um, of Matt Fraction, Hawkeye. I never read anyone after Kelly Thompson or anyone else that did it. Uh, but I liked Rosenberg's. It's new. I really should pull away from it and uh, and wait for trades and stuff or actually just catch up on Hawkeye in general. Um, it's just a really interesting character that uh, warrants a ongoing series or at least a semi-ongoing series. So that's, that's really cool. Um, this is Jay Sandlin, Over the Ropes. I tried to order number one. It didn't come in. So, and then I was like, oh, I'll order the, the, um, trade and well, I guess I forgot, forgot to cancel this to get the trade. So I'll figure it out. So Jay Sandlin was uh, actually interviewed by two brothers comics. So, uh, two new cool people in the community and, um, he's done like short stories for Ashcan press, which I've written a, a couple short stories for. Uh, and he's one of the, um, you know, actually paid comic writers and stuff. So this is exciting to read that for me. Uh, a little more Alterna. Uh, this is The Adventures of uh, Mr. Crypt and Baron Rat. It's humor, adventure. See, this is the kind of thing where, oh, it looks okay, but I probably wouldn't pick it up off the shelf kind of thing. But I don't know. Maybe if I read it. Mighty Mascots was like that. Which, there is nothing wrong with Mighty Mascots. It's just not for me. Um, this one has been, that first issue was awesome. In fact, I'm going to set this aside to make sure I read it. It doesn't get in some like forgotten pile. Uh, Midnight Mystery has been solid. The ones I've read, this is the, um, this is volume two. So volume one was good. I'm not sure if I finished it. I have to flip through those. Thor number two. Um, Thor number one was pretty good. I'll see, uh, how long I stick, I stick with this guy. Um, I'm selling all the War of the Realm stuff. I think I have a buyer already, so... You know, I, I can get bored pretty easy of Thor. Um, I've, I love Jason Aaron just like everyone else did, but I would stop a lot. And, you know, when I think back on it, I just had to, had my fill of Thor here and there. And so there's big sections of Jason Aaron's book that I am, you know, that I've not read actually, and then I've picked it up back again. Um, I didn't read most of Jane Foster Thor, to be honest. Not because I thought it was a dumb idea, just because it felt like a good time to stop reading it at the time. Um, Invisible, Invisible Kingdom, I've uh, enjoyed this. Uh, Burger books have been the best coming out of Dark Horse lately, aside from if you're into the Alien and Predator stuff. Um, but there has been a couple other ones that I thought were Burger books, and then when I went and looked at them, they weren't. So 
you know, Dark Horse feels like it's like, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's just my my uh, incorrect perception. So here's a few Conan. So um, there's that's number twelve for uh, the Barbarian. But so I went to a, a com we have a comic store in a mall. Like the malls are really falling apart here. Like I guess they are everywhere, right? It's like a have you ever seen a dentist shop in a mall? So our mall now has like an absolute dental and also has a comic store, which is cool because you wouldn't have seen that. It'd have been too expensive for a comic store to open there. But I went in there looking for, then this is a, like maybe a week or two weeks ago. I went in there looking for Conan the Barbarian 12 because it felt like a long time ago that Conan the Barbarian 11 came out and I thought I just missed it. Uh, Conan the Barbarian is, you know, where he's climbing the mountain and the mountain turns out to be. And then... Uh, and then I was like, oh man, I, I must have missed 12. I better go look for that. I just thought I just didn't get off the shelf. Um, and it turns out that uh, it just came out this week. So doesn't it feel like it's been two or three months or something? I feel like Jim Zub was announced to take over like a long time ago. But anyway, there it is, finishing off Jason Aaron's 12-issue uh, run. I wish we had got, I liked his, what he did, like, you know, I've said this so many times already, I'm so sick of saying it, but those sort of one-shot thing with an overarching story connecting it, and then these last few issues have been that. Um, but I do wish we would have, you know, we got more standard fare, um, long-form storytelling uh, from him and Conan, and, and we don't now. It's over. Conan's over for him, now it's Jim Zub. We'll see how that one goes. Um, so what I did get is Savage Sword 12, which I did forget. So somehow we got up, somehow 12 came out before, of Savage Sword came out before Barbarian, even though Conan the Barbarian came out at least a month, maybe two ahead of Savage Sword. They had a weird schedule there, I'm sure it got pushed back. And then since I was there, I figured, hey, let's get old school Conan. I like the magazine style. See what's up with the magazine style. And, uh... And I wanted to get a feel from the artwork there. And uh, I gotta say, I like the black and white artwork. You know, um, babes, damsels in distress. We'll see how it actually reads. So, uh, when I opened it up, I was like, oh, okay, it's not this sort of four color cartoony stuff. Like, I, I just need my Conan to really feel, um, you know, dark and rainy and obscure and whatnot. Someone's going to, I don't know if you guys saw that. Someone's going to tell me not to use tape. Um, of course, that's not my tape. That's someone else's tape. What else we got here? Uh, Rick and Morty. I don't know why I don't read the regular comic. I think because these Dungeons and Dragons ones, I, I, I read the first four because I knew it was going to be an arc. And, and uh, you know, I had mixed feelings about them, but I remember them fondly now. And then here's the second arc. I think they're on number two or three, but I've gotten behind. So I just grabbed number two. I can grab three whenever I want, you know. Um, sort of silly, sort of fun, but I don't know why I don't just read the regular Rick and Morty if I like that humor so much, you know? Fallen Angels number six. I think, um, you know, every X-Men book has a, a different following, um, and it, and it seems person to person. Uh, people have, you know, hugely different views, but if you averaged it out, you know, I think X-Force and Marauders would be one or two. I think Fallen Angels would be towards the bottom. Probably along with Excalibur. There's some people that like it, some people that don't. Um, I think he just missed something. I think Brian Hill is a great writer. Um, I know people have trouble with Kudransky's art here. I've talked about it a little bit. Um, but he he did, he did missed a beat here because he's a really good writer. He's probably one of my favorite, you know, non-clearly top writers that everyone likes. You know what I mean? Like, everyone loves Grant Morrison, even if they don't like everything Grant Morris and everyone loves Hickman. Everyone loves Neil Gaiman. I don't know why I pulled Neil Gaiman out of there. So as far as like just writers I like that aren't like held up to this impossible um, pedestal, uh, he's one of my favorites. And American Courage is probably my favorite book last year or up there. Um, but uh, he did miss a beat here. Something's going on and I couldn't put my, my hand on it. Uh, Wicked and the Righteous. This is volume two, more Alterna here. I got a big stack of Alterna. Um, in case you, they gave me two in case you missed it. I feel like I got cheated there. Mr. Crypt, why would I do that? And then the chair, um, geez, I read this as a graphic novel. This is like the blank variant. Um, but I guess there's more than one if it was in comic form, huh? I don't know. This was okay. Like this is, uh, it gets pushed a lot and I guess it's a movie, but, um, I don't think it was that great. 
hey, I keep buying it. I'm so behind on it. But I keep buying new comics, so it's in my it's in the front of my short box of things to read. But I keep buying new comics and, and can't get a dent into that short box. And then of course, New Mutants number six, and Hickman's not drawing this one anymore. And now it's we're back to the Brisson story. It's uh jumping around really strange. So we'll see what's going on here. Um I'll probably do a lightning review. Um I mean, I don't know when I'm gonna release this, but later on tonight, record this, we'll see. Uh, I didn't catch up to as many reviews as I wanted to. Uh, I like the individual reviews better, uh, even though they get less views, but that's fine um, because I can only talk to so many of you. So for me, it's cool when you guys, you know, when either it's a book we've both read or it's a book for some reason you want to hear what I have to say about it and then there's a conversation going down there. So I like that a lot better because I could sort of organize the thoughts where the lightning review has a lot of stuff in it. I like it when you guys do those. Um, and I like it when I do them too, but I just, I really prefer the, um, the, the mile deep, not that I get too deep, but the mile deep rather than the mile wide sort of look at things. But, uh, we'll see if I have time, I'll, I'll do those kind of reviews. And if I don't, I won't. Right. So anyway, thank you guys for watching at Casting Comics on Instagram and Twitter. You guys have a great day. Thank you.